Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to use a stripped down song, guitar and vocal with some minor overdubs to demonstrate compression. I'm going to do it on the analog console. So come on in the room, I've got a song from the Samson Brothers in Cape Town, South Africa once again. They've been kind enough to let us use their music. Come on in the room, let's take a listen to it and uh, get into it. Alright, the first thing I would like to do, and it's very important that everybody do this under all circumstances, is to Take in the intent of the mixer, take in the intent of the producer, the artists, everybody. Really feel and connect with what it is they delivered to us because we're responsible and charged with the final process that's going to go out to the fans. And the whole point of the fans listening to a song is to make it sound like we were never there. They have to connect with that performance, they have to connect with that material. It's crucial that this is the case. So. In today's case, I don't have any notes from anybody. I don't have any direction from any producer or artist. They sent the song. They want me to do what I do. Uh, you might find yourself in a position where you get clear directives. You might find yourself in a position where you're told to do what you do. So let's take a listen to the song. Feel the intent of this music. And from there, we'll make decisions on how to process it. Here goes. That is a great song, and the vocal comes in a little bit hot in the beginning. It settles into the track, so it kind of hit me a little hard in the beginning, but um, I got used to it in the track. I want to maybe hit that with a compressor in the beginning, just glue those elements together a little bit more. Now, there's a danger in doing this, because if you've received no directives, no direction from anybody who's involved in the chain of events in making this music, you could end up uh, getting a rejection of what you submit. Um, it's very important that when you give a track back to an artist that they feel magnificent about what you did. If there's any doubt or any, you know, trepidation on anybody's part, the process usually falls off the rails. Now, if I call the artist and say, look, your vocal comes in a little hot in the beginning, but it's fine in the rest of the track, you may also uh, inject some insecurity into the artist, and you, you don't want to do that if it's something that needs to be corrected in the mix so that we can better serve the music then sure there's a case for that and there's a delicate way to handle that type of communication and we can get into that in future videos the art of communication is a very important thing especially when dealing with artists who are bearing their soul um, in this case i believe i have the tools to work with that and the rest of the work that i'm going to do is a vibe play it's it's compression to kind of glue the elements together a little bit, but it's also making sure everything breathes out. So I'm going to use EQ to make sure that when I get the compressors going, everything sort of breathes out a little more. And as that track, as you can see in the beginning and in the middle, as it drops back down to some really beautiful guitar riffs, I'm going to follow the input level into the compressor so that the compressor doesn't open up and breathe out and raise those parts. So that's my approach that I that I want to try having listened to the track down and we'll see where it goes. Let's check it out. I'm going to patch in the manly to start. All right, let's start working. First, gain structure. In my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to visually alter the clip gain of the track. And from there, what I'll do is I'll alter the digital to analog converter level going into the console. So between 
the clip gain and my D to A level, I'm going to start to work and come up with my gain structure so that at the end of the chain, when I make my print back to digital, it's at a good LUFS level for the track, appropriate to the track. So first off, I'm going to take a listen and just see how this manly very me feels on this track. I'll go into it a little bit and hit it before the first big dynamic range. The feet I'm going to take another listen to this track going from this beautiful guitar riff stuff in the middle of the track, low in level, and how that expands into the larger section of the song. But if you notice the EAR that I have set, I kind of have a little bit of a boost all frequencies thing going. And I've got 60 hertz, 120, 3K, 6K, and 10K. And to the untrained eye, if you look at that, it looks like I've got a lot of dB of a lot of things going on here. But in fact, if you measure the curve of this, it's a pretty flat curve, but it's just some increased saturation. So I'm pushing the amplification units in the unit itself, and I'm kind of hitting all frequencies just to push it up, and I'm getting the gain structure to come into it from clip gain and from the D to A converter to get that kind of saturation. So there's actually very little EQ going on if you look at the actual curve. And if you want to know what EQ is going on, it's more centered in the 3 to 6K area. There's some 10K shelf, there's some low end EQ, which really is supporting this high end and mid high EQ. And to get a little more punch in the music, I'm going with a solid state EQ and I'm shaping the low end, getting a little bit on low down and a little bit off lower than that. So a little bit on at 40, a little bit off at 30, shaping it, getting, getting some you know, there's no punch in the song really, there's no kick drum, there's no drums or anything, but just getting some shape to that low end to help support everything as it goes into the tube equipment. So let's check it again. Let's check it from this really nice guitar part going into the big section. Okay, so I'm going to back off the clip gain a little bit. I'm just getting a little bit too heavy into the console and that vocal that stepped out that I spoke about in the beginning, I'm hearing that on the tail end of the song too. So I'm still not quite there. I'm going to patch in the Shadow Hills and take a listen to that. Let's check that out. Same section from the middle of the, the track with that cool guitar stuff. And let's see how this feels. Just looking for a feeling at the moment. I'm not really measuring anything. I'm not dialing, I'm not diving in, other than just feeling the essence of this equipment. And once once it's right, you just kind of know it, you feel it. Once you're there, then you can start dialing and shaping and all that stuff. But you want to get the right chain and the right order of events within the chain. So let's take a listen to the Shadow Hills. Heartache, heartache from within 
Okay, so I know the characteristic of the Manly Very Mew versus the Shadow Hills, and I know the Shadow Hills to be a little more punchy, a little more uh, upper, mid-range, high-endy. Uh, the Very Mew is a little more um, rounded edges, that type of thing. And I just discovered something. I backed off on the EAR, the tube equalizer. Um, when I listened to the Shadow Hills, I was still feeling that kind of sharp edge, that push that I was trying to get away from. So I took the, the boost all frequency vibe that I mentioned and I backed everything down on, on all bands and everything felt more congealed, more, more uh, dialed to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to patch the Manly back in and see if that EQ holds with the Manly and the characteristic of the Manly might be better for the track. All right, here we go. Same section, now with a corrected EQ on the EAR going into the Manly Very Mew, which is a beautiful limiter. I love it. I've had it all the years I've been working and active. So the integration of all the skier is really, really uh, something special when you get it right. starting to come together so let's listen from the first section and I want to see how that vocal comes in and if it still feels without any riding or tweaking or anything with where I am I want to see if that vocal still hits hard and heavy the way it did when I listened to the track without anything on it so let's check that out I really like that. Now we're getting somewhere. So I'm going to start to dial this in. I feel really good about this chain. And an interesting point of note, a little sidetrack here. I heard a little tick on this music before the vocal came in. So that's not something I'm going to mention to the artist. And I can tell it's a glitch and I can tell it doesn't belong there. So normally when you alter a track and you take the tools to detect something, it is worthy of discussion because sometimes there's vinyl static. Sometimes the artist wants that kind of you know, cool sound in there and doesn't want it to sound too perfect. But in this case, I know these guys, they didn't give me any directives on the music. They didn't say anything. I heard something which will sound better if it's gone. So I'm going to use my tools to, to detect that. I'm not going to say anything to them. I'm just going to present it back to them. And I'm going to take the calculated risk that they're not going to call me and say, hey, where's that glitch? Because it's not a track with vinyl noise. It's not a track with imperfections like that. It's a really beautiful track. It's clean, it's clear, it's got a beautiful lush high end. It's not open and harsh. It's it's nice. It's it's this core high end kind of sound. And all I really want to do is breathe it out. So the um the little glitch will be dealt with as a part of our service to the track, as a service to the fans and all of that stuff. So there's a time and a place on how to handle that stuff. Just a little sidestep there that I thought I'd mention. Let's listen again. I want to see how it feels going from further back in that intro into the song. So I'm going to listen for a little bit longer this time, and I'm going to dial as we go. Let it 
it's all unwind And let it all be light Hoping that you'll find Just let it all Really, really liking the way this track feels. This combo, this chain, really put that vocal in the place that I wanted to put it in. And I don't believe that when they listen to it, they're going to feel that I altered anything. They know I'm here to alter things. They know I'm here to service the track. So they're going to expect something different back. I don't believe they will view this negatively based on my relationship with the brothers. And um, I just think it's the right thing to do. It feels right. You got to bring that level of confidence to the music. You have to know that when you submit something, it's your best work. You stand behind it. And for me, tube EQ, solid state EQ. Tube limiter, solid state limiter. Another solid state high frequency limiter, which really works in conjunction with that tube equalizer at the front of the chain. So that all combined and the gain structure going into that is really the key to the sounds. Thanks for coming along on the ride to work on this track with me. It's very exciting to show you what I do on the analog console. Thanks for subscribing to our channel. Stay tuned, come back for more, and we'll see you next time.